Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, everyone. This is me, Jonathan Alexander, and I'm here to host our show, Life, Laughter, Happiness. Today, I have my co-host, Barbara, here with me. Are you there, Barbara? Sure am. Hi, everybody. Oh, hi. And um, for the second week, in a period of the three weeks, we have Joseph Labruco. Are you there, Joseph? I am here, Johnny. Thanks for having me on. Hi, Joseph. Welcome back. I'm doing wonderful today, or tonight, I should say. Oh, good. Yes. Tonight for you guys in Florida. Wow. (laughs) Guess what, everybody? Okay. Joseph Labruto, he is on for a series three Mondays in a row. This is the second Monday. Okay. If you haven't caught the first show, it's on. Life, Laughter, Happiness, YouTube. Yeah. But today, we're going to talk about some other things. And one of the things I want to know is, this is happening right now in my life. I think I've got it under control, but I'd like to talk to my favorite medium, by the way, about narcissists and how we can get rid of them. And then I'd also like to tell everybody, this is a bulletin, that my birthday's coming up, and I just have listed all of Joseph Labruto's books found on Amazon on my <laughs> Barbara's birthday list. Good go. <laughs> go. And while you get my copy, get yourself one, too. <laughs> Welcome, Joseph. Thank you, Barbara, and thank you for getting my books and stuff, too. And thank you, Johnny, for having me on tonight as well. Now, Joseph, before we came on, you mentioned you wanted to bring something up. Yeah, I had a great weekend in St. Augustine, Florida, um, doing ghost investigations. And um, for those of you who are in the Florida area, in the northern area, Jacksonville and St. Augustine, um, I'm working on coming there in January to do an event, um, or events and workshops there, too. Um, It's the Cauldron 2 metaphysical store is going to be putting me, um, uh, facilitating it or sponsoring it as I facilitate my events there. Um, There in St. Augustine, it's known as an ancient city of 1500s when the Spaniards came in. They have the fort and, and it's known as a ghost town as well. And I went there with one of my assistants, Stephanie, and um, we did some ghost investigations where we went to what is called the old jail. And um, we had some activity where I used what's called um, dowsing rods. And these dowsing rods are brass where you, you hold these rods in your hand. And Stephanie was instructing them if um, anyone in this room would like to be spoken to, make an X with the rod, and you'll see the rods kind of cross in front. And as she kept on asking questions, as I held her, I was the ground, I was the channel, I was bringing in the spirits. She was doing the instructions and the directions on on these rods. So um, eventually she was saying, go into the light, and, and I started repeating that. And then I asked, you understand what I'm saying? Let the rods go in a circle. And all of a sudden, the two rods started doing big big circles around and around and around as I held these rods. So we were having these communications with spirit, which was pretty cool. And, you know, I was helping, or Stephanie and I were both helping them cross over into the light, which was wonderful. Um, another thing. I have all this posted on my um, Instagram and Facebook, um, the video of the rods and stuff. And plus there was a photograph. Um, Stephanie was taking a photograph of me by this um, architect, this old home, it was, and noticed afterwards um, a friend of mine on Facebook, um, Angela, said, you know, there's a ghost looking out the window at you. And I went, huh? And then she said, look at the windows. She was texting me. So I looked at the window, and we could see two faces looking down at me. Uh, ghosts. So I kind of circled them with a yellow yellow circle, and I posted them on my Facebook page and Instagram also. So these are the things we did in St. Augustine over the weekend, and it was pretty fun. So I love doing ghost investigations and communications and everything. That sounds very fun. <laughs> yep. Oh, my gosh. So 
Okay. When you were talking about the girls, how you help them transition, I was thinking yeah. about them. Why are they there so long? That's a lot of years. Well, that they've not it's a jail. It was, it was known as it was known as the old jailhouse, and um, many of the prisoners died there. Um, That's spooky. From cruelty and you know death after death after death. Um, so when you when you die of circumstances like that, a lot of them get stuck. And they don't know to go into the light. Some of them are holding on to the pain. So what we were doing is just healing them. And I asked my guides to come and guide them where they need to be and go into the light to heal their pain. Are they afraid? Because if they were holding on to pain, is it because they don't know where else to go? Or do they kind of have an idea, but they're unsure of it? Maybe that'll be more painful. Do you have more of an idea of how they think? It's the circumstances of how they passed away. If it's in cruelty, if they were hung, shot, um, murdered, you know, or if di- died in the cell, um, it's just they're getting stuck in a place. Sometimes when we feel we're not worthy to go to heaven, that we should be resting in hell, um, then we create a hell for ourselves, and we're kind of stuck here. So the purpose of mediums would do is just to bring light into their into their world so they can see the light and understand that God forgives them and they're welcome to come and join their families. And and those who, you know, for those who have hurt other people that are in prison, there's forgiveness, though. Their souls will forgive them for what they have done, and they receive the forgiveness and the blessings so they can move on into the higher realm. And that's what the whole crossing that's over. That's actually nice of you. That's so. actually a nice gesture for you to do this for them. You know, just well, yeah, because and they're, they're, release. yeah, they're they're stuck. I know most of these they they ghost things. They make business on ghosts and stuff like that. But I can feel, I feel their pain actually when I'm there. I feel heaviness. I feel sorrow. I feel, you know, I can feel their pain of being stuck. So you know, as a medium, I feel all those where the regular person may not feel there as entertainment. Oh, there's ghosts here. Oh, let's see if we can catch a ghost on a. Um, you know, on a thermal camera because they had thermal cameras going on, and so. But as a sensitive, the way I am, I can actually feel the emotions of where they went through. And with these dividing rods that I had that were made of copper, they can communicate with me by, if it's a yes, cross them in front. If it's a no, wide open. And then I'll ask them to completely circle them around. Um, if you're understanding completely what I'm saying. And, and sometimes we have the rods just spinning like a helicopter round and around and oh, around. Wow. It, <laughs> it was yeah, pretty cool. Like pendulum that I it worked, yeah, it's it's like a pendulum that I Yeah, it cool. works like a pendulum, exactly. And um, the stronger the medium, the, the more action you get. Um, it was Stephanie's first time ever using the rods, and it was moving here and there. And then she said, go ahead, you try it now. And the whole thing was moving and spinning and up and down. And she looked at me and said, of course. I said, well, I've been doing this for a uh, while. And plus these rides have my energy in it too. But she was part of it because she was giving the directions and the instructions to the to the spirits. And they were listening to her by answering, as I held the rods, they were answering her questions, which was pretty fascinating. Oh, that is fascinating. Totally cool. And that you even do this. Because that's a new thing I just found out. I didn't even know. So everybody, <laughs> let's go over there to your Facebook and Instagram and check that out and like it. Oh, that is really cool. What do you think, Johnny? What do you think that's about great. that? Great. Um, are you yeah. ready to take a call, or did she want to talk more? We can, we can do that, Johnny. Oh, uh, we can take a call. I, Oh, no. Okay, wow. but, but, yeah. okay. you're on the air. Hello, Barbara and Joseph. Oh, my gosh, Joseph, that's such an awesome story, and that is so generous of you, really. Uh, that is, well, that is that's awesome. What, that's what our, our channels and mediums, that, that's what we're here for. We're here to cross over the lost souls and help them the past. And it's just, you know, it's the main thing to do. They're, they're lo- there's, they're, there's losses ever, and they just don't know which way to go and how to find their way home. And they just need to find a direction to go in. So. Yeah, but and, that's, and you, you know, that's where it's great of you to do that. Cause as you mentioned, a lot of people do that, you know, for show and whatever else. So that's, yeah. that's very nice of you. 
should do that. And, and your and your name is D D E E. Hi, hi D. And where are you calling from? I am calling from Washington D.C. Okay, welcome to the show, D. Thank and what you. Can, what can we do for you tonight? Well. I am looking for full-time opportunity. I am working at the moment as a contractor, but I need a full-time opportunity. I had an interview last week and have been sending out my resume. So just call and see the type of energy or what you're picking up in regards to that. All right, how many resumes did you? How many? Um, yeah, how many resumes resumes did you put out there already? Oh my gosh, <laughs> quite a few. <laughs> Quite a few. All I right, do at so. least, yeah, I do at least probably for the week, probably about five or six a week. All right, so let's ask the question, when do I see um, an interview, so to say, from one of these resumes that are com- that you put through? Uh, we are in August, mid-August. You know, I, I have a feeling you're going to get a call next week or the end. Uh, we're Monday here. At the, by Thursday, Friday of this week, I have a feeling you're going to get a phone call. So, hmm. and and it's is that, be that from quick. the in, is it is that from the interview that I had or um, something else? It's going to be from the resumes that you put out there. Um, it's probably that. Okay. Um, did you have an interview about two weeks ago? Um, a week a week ago. All right, we'll, we'll take it a week ago. It's possibly that one from a week ago. Um, that that's going to be calling you back. But I feel like it's going to be this week. By by ten, by the end of the week, you should get a phone call. Awesome. And do you have a website that I can take a look at? I'm not on yep. Facebook. I am. Mm-hmm. A- it's mm-hmm. our journey. Okay. It's our journey of life. Dot com. And is that for you on Instagram? Um, the Instagram is my name, Joseph Liberto. That's my handle. How you spell Instagram. the last name? L O B. Yeah, L O B R U T T O. Awesome. Thank you so much. I will definitely check you out. Thank you. I appreciate thank, you. Thank you. Have you a good D. one. Yeah, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thanks for calling. And that's so nice. Thank you. She saw the, yes, we hope to hear from you again. She saw the generosity in what you did. And mm-hmm. you really do genuinely want to help people and love what you do, which even makes it more contagious to follow you in everything that you do. That is well, so cool. And good news, news for the caller about the job interview. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, I just feel like that interview is going to come up this week. That, well, not the interview, but I feel like a, a, either a second interview or it's, it's going to happen this week, end of the week, as they're telling me. Um, that's always but exciting. Come to the ghost investigations. I've been doing this for years, and um, a lot of times I'll go with these ghost teams, and they will get my impression, and they'll start to write down, um, I'll share a story here. I was it's called a Hollywood Beach Resort in Hollywood, Florida. And um where I was up in the t- it was a top top floor and it used to be a banquet room and all of a sudden I felt shootout and massacre and um so I got validation that, you know, the persons who knew the history of the hotel said, Yeah, this was where Al Capone gang would be and there was a shootout here and everything. And then I went cool. to the back where the kitchen was and I felt there was a fire here and they feel either Haitian or Jamaican they were burned to death. And then they said, Yeah, it was a big kitchen fire and a lot of the cooks and chefs a lot of the cooks and staff were trapped there. Um they were from the islands of Haiti and Jamaica and they died there in that spot. So as we kept on going, all of a sudden I felt this heavy energy, and I couldn't breathe. When I feel heavy energy, it just sucks the life out of me, and I start coughing and trying to catch breath. I remember trying to get a window that was nailed shut open just to get some air. And I had the the um, the crew with me, the um, ghost crew. They had their video cameras. They had their um, recorders going. So after I made myself downstairs to get some breath of air, they decided to play back the recorder as everything. You can hear me, like, kind of coughing, coughing and running, and they said, let's get some air, let's get some air. But all of a sudden, you heard a voice. It was a high-pitched woman voice that said, leave him alone. (laughs) And they caught a ghost voice saying that. So eventually some 
negative spirit was trying to attack me, and some woman voice and spirit got in the way and said, leave him alone. And we caught that on the recorder. And that oh, was so cool. That is amazing. So, yeah. I have so. watched these things, and they are quite amazing. But you also have to have a lot of patience, too. You don't yeah. just go there and all of a sudden, maybe for you, that happens. All of a sudden, you hear things. But sometimes I'm watching these shows for hours until I hear something. From yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, the, a lot of it's made for TV. They have to keep it excited and stuff. And mainly, when I go to these ghost investigations, what I do is I just I I feel things and what happened. Like here in Palm Beach, there's the Gulfstream Hotel by Lake Worth, Florida, where I did an investigation where I said, "All right, there's a little girl holding my hand. I could actually sense her holding my hand, and she's scared. She's looking for her mommy." And then when I got when we're walking, there's the elevator, and she stopped. And she says, "I can't go there." Mommy says, "Don't go there. Don't go there." And I'm telling I tell the ghost investigation people, there's a little girl there, and she's afraid of some kind of man here. But she says, "Do not go by the elevator. Something happened to her in the elevator." When they did the research, they found out in the 19 I guess it was the 1960s, a little girl fell down the elevator shaft there. So that oh. kind of validated that that girl, the spirit of that girl, was still yeah. wandering the halls looking for her mommy. So um, I did one of my crossovers things after I heard that, um, sending her into light, seeing her mom, and hopefully that, that she was able to transition after I did that. So, mm-hmm. But doing this work, it takes so much energy. It just zaps me out. It's like draining a battery that... Yeah. I can't I can't I have to call in sick all week um uh, because I can't see people in appointments because I'm just zapped out. So I don't do these investigations often because and I I you know I was just telling Johnny, God, I'm so tired today. I wonder why I'm dragging so much. Now, yeah, I did a ghost investigation yesterday. Now I know why I'm so yeah. dragging and tired. Oh, uh, this is what I was going to ask you. I thought maybe you were tired from your big day today, but h- hello, it's going to take a while. That's a yeah, lot that's, of I, it, it, yeah, because it, now it, it now it dawned on me because that we did it Saturday night, and even Sunday on my way on a drive home, it's like a four hour drive home. I was exhausted. I was tired. I I I hit that pillow and I went to sleep. I couldn't get up this morning, and right, I'm still dragging right now, like I'm low energy. So that's exactly it. just that little thing that we did at the jailhouse. It just wiped it just wiped me out. All right. But I I get that it does. I would get that it does. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Are you... Hey Johnny, what were you talking? Nothing. Nothing. I want to put your head. No. Yeah, I'm that's done. why I'm trying to. Uh, hopefully, I get enough energy to read people. I know the phone lines are filled today, and I'm going to yep. do my best. They are. And, uh, mm-hmm. Well, okay. Let's not yes. just give everybody 15 minutes. That's a lot. They can contact Joseph for a long one. You know, for a oh, long yeah. one is, at their, a, at their leisure. This is like a two. This is like a three, three to four minute type thing. So yeah, okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll we'll see how many calls we can get through. All right. Next okay. caller. Uh, is area code three four seven? You are there. Hi, thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. And your first name is? My name's Tommy. It's a pleasure speaking with you, Joseph. Pleasure too. Where are you calling from, Tommy? I'm calling from Long Island. I was born in Long Island, so I'm originally a Long Island medium. How about that? <laughs> Sweet. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. So, yeah, I was born in the Oceanside area, Allen Park, Nassau County. That's where I was born. Oh, okay. I'm in I'm in Nassau County as well. All right. Well, yep, that's that's where I was born. So, what can I do for you, Tommy? Well, Joseph, I'm looking to settle down and get married. Do you see the love of my life coming into my life anytime soon, or is it possibly someone I've already met? How old are you, Tommy? I'm 52, Joseph. 52 years young. Okay. <laughs> I'm older than you. That's why I say 52 years young. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's ask the question: Do I see you alone for the rest of your life? I have no. I do see a. I, I do see a person that you will be with. I see a person will do the death do your part. So there is somebody you are going to grow out old with. Um, 52. 
I'm trying to figure out where we're going to go. I'm going to say it, it's definitely going to be between, by the time you're 55 years of age, within the three years, I feel someone's going to come into your life. It's going to be about 10 to 15 years younger than you, this person. So let's say, let's round it off to like you're 52, let's say 54 years of age, two years. So this person's either going to be, in, they're probably going to be in their mid 40s, I want to say. Um, that's going to come into your life. And I could do see, if it's not a married situation, I could see it's a, a situation where um, it would be a lifetime partner as well. And I'm feeling more of that too. Um, but I, I feel okay. you have t- two years. Now, you ask if that person has come into your life, possibly, but something that so this person is dragging their feet for some reason. But I feel within the two years, this person is going it, to, it's going to be a go, be a strong go. Okay. So there is a woman that is 10 years younger that I'm interested in. You think it's maybe her? Can I tell you the name of that help? How, well, how long you been? How long did you know this person? Well, we just went out once. <laughs> but there's okay. something very amazing about this woman. Okay. This person is, like I said, about 10 to 15 years younger. Um, there's a, there's going to be a connection. It's going to be about two years before you talk marriage. So anyway, you know, if you just met, you're going to be in a two-year relationship before you even talk marriage for at least minimum. So yeah, this is a good possibility because I do see it's it's not that far off. So. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, Joseph. I appreciate it. All right. You're welcome, Tommy. All right. Wish you, you. wish you the best. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Nice. Okay. Hold on. Hey, Joseph. Can you tell if I am making the right decision? I. Okay, well, I will keep it the same if you say I have been fair. I had to get rid of a friend for many years, but they were a narcissist, I realized. When I started to have problems, I got rid of them. Then I started looking this up, and I realized they fall into this category big time. Like there Mm -hmm. is even a special name for it. Um, Right. What is it? A magnet? A magna? Ultra. Uh, narcissist. Okay, have I made the right decision by just telling them I don't want you in my life and keep it keeping it that way, or is there hope for them to get rehabilitated? All right, this is the person person you're dating, a person you're seeing. No, it's a friend. It's a friend. Oh, okay. And yeah, same thing. Okay, it's a friend. On a dating. Mm-hmm. That's all I could find, it, by the way, Joseph. Mostly is relationship narcissist. Uh, to learn about. I'd like to learn about friends. Okay, so this is a friend then. You're not dating the person, correct? Correct. It's a woman, too. Oh, it's a woman. Okay. All right. What happens is is that um, as you're doing this show with Johnny, you're you're interviewing a lot of psychics, enlightened people, and our energy starts to shift, and we start to think differently, and we start to notice people that we were probably – attracted to years ago or friends years ago that um, we probably would like like them that when we start as, as we start to get more enlightened we start to outgrow them um, the people who are more materialistic more about themselves and we start to see that we don't want that part of ourselves like that and maybe we were that person years ago and we're changing we're growing so this is what happens not having this person as a friend i i don't think that's a by bringing things up to this person, maybe you can help this person understand themselves and see. It's up, to, it's up to them to walk out away from you, but I would keep pointing out things that you see about this person. And if this person okay. can change, it, you're there to help that person. But if they refuse to change, then that person's going to walk away out of your life, and you don't even have to walk out. They'll walk out on you. Okay, so I could give them one more chance, and then eventually mm. they're just. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep pointing those out, and then they will walk out. Exactly. At this point, if, they just if op- are telling me I'm crazy, you know. No, it's it. Sometimes, you know, sometimes we don't notice or are what we are, but then eventually it clicks, and um, and then they'll start to see. Okay, I'm acting this way, and and. When we see things that are the way we act or things that um, that we can change to better ourselves, then we start to work on it. And well, it's just a realization of knowing that we're doing something that and we can change and better ourselves. And I feel like this is what you need to do with her. And um, I feel like she'll she'll eventually be open to it. Okay, that's nice because it's been weighing on me a little bit. 
See, that's what I yeah. love about you is you're a counselor too. Can you tell us really quickly about if I was a client, describe a client to you. Is it only about the, the, uh, now I'm losing my word, uh, para, Normal. Okay. Okay. What do I what do I actually do? Um, there's there's yeah. a lot of things I do. Um, for instance, what we did right now, you said I'm a counselor. Um, I am I'm a I'm a I'm an ordained minister as well. I went through a ministry school, and to become a minister, and I learned how to to counsel, to talk with people on a level that we do, and I use my divine um, wisdom or. Um, my my um for my um psychic readings connecting to with divine so to say to give readings to give life path directions i always give people free choices to make i don't say this is going to happen in stone i always bring another thing i said this could happen if you change things but i see this is going to happen if you don't change things so with us having free will we have the opportunity to change things um it's like your reading here with your friend. She'll have an opportunity to see what's going on to change herself, and if she doesn't, then she'll just walk away, and and that's that's the free will part. Now that's I call that spiritual counseling. Um, the other callers were coming in asking about careers, relationship. That's more of a life path reading, and what I see is best way to describe myself is I'm like a magic eight ball, and. I work with spirit guides. I'm not like a traditional psychic that works with the um, tarot cards and things. Um, my guides help me answer. So whenever somebody asks a question, a specific question, my guides answer that question for them. That's why I ask age because normally I work, especially in relationships with age, I work on a time frame with age. Um, the healer, I am also a, a divine energy healer where I channel these healing masters through me and I work through the person's back with energy. And people have been healed from major diseases, cancers, aches and pains. Um, you know, I have a whole page of testimonials of people who are actually healed um, where these masters work through me. So I am also a healer. Um, my mediumship abilities, connecting with the loved ones on the other side, giving closure. Um, so that's one of my strengths too as well. And a channel where I actually go into trance and I bring these guides and they speak directly one-on-one -on -one with you. Um, when I do a group setting, a channeling set setting, they will give advice to people. Um, they'll tell them about their lives and what they do to better themselves, improve their lives. And, um, and that's what the channeling is about. So that's pretty much the concept of everything that I do. Well, thank you for describing that. That's a lot. And I do now remember last week you said I can even do that. So I want to. I'm going to take you up on that kind of healing thing. I just want to hone into exactly what I want to have healed. So right. is it important that we come with details or trust? No, I don't even need to know what's going on with the person because the masters are the one who does the healing. Um, I'm just going to, even in a reading, I'm going to share a testimonial I got last week where um, somebody called on on, sh on a show like this, and as I was reading the person, I said, you know, there's something going on with your throat that they're telling me. You need to go to the doctors. Now, I'm not going to diagnose. I'm not going to say what's wrong with them. But I said, you need to go to the doctors and have that checked out. Long story short, she wrote a testimony letter. She said she went to the doctors a few weeks later, and she had thyroid cancer just developing there, and they caught it just in time to to remove it. And she just thanked me for because if I didn't say anything to her, this could have gone on for years without getting checked, and it could have been very detrimental to her. So oh, that's yeah. part of the healing. That's pretty much about the healing aspect of what I am. So I really don't need to know. A person can just sit sit across from me, and um, for some reason, people say, "God, you touched the spot where it hurts, like they they have aches and pains." I just know where to go and where to touch it. Um, like the other day, I was talking about the ghost story and my assistant, Stacy. No, I'm sorry, the other assistant, Stephanie. I got all S's for assistants. Um, Stephanie, um, she had lower back pain. I said, okay, let me try something real quick. And I just put my hand just on her lower back. And within minutes, the pain just went away. And she said, wow, it just went away. So um, 
and that's like I said, aches and pains will go away and dissipate very quick too. Mm. And my so sister nice. Stacy. Okay, now, now I mentioned Stacy too. Stacy had Crohn's disease for many years, and she saw me years back, and I was doing healing with her. And it, it flares up nowadays, nowadays now, but this is going back 10, 15 years ago. And the doctors were, were fabricated. They said, whatever you're doing, keep it up because you're Crohn's free. And that was after I was working with her in her healing. Wow. So, yeah. That is amazing. Healing right. hands. Um, and another, and my other assistant, Terry, when I first met her, before she was my assistant, she had an accident where she couldn't raise her arms above her head, and I worked on her shoulders and her arms. And then a week later, she said, Joseph, look, I can raise my hands over my head, and I can, I can grab things off the shelf. So, you know, it seems like I heal people and they become my assistants. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They don't want to leave your side once you heal them. That's great. <laughs> That's true. Cool. Okay. Wow. Are you um ready for another call? Yeah, we can we we can we can do another call, sure. Area code six one zero, you're on the air. Hi, Hi yes. Hello. Hi. Hi. And who and who's Hello. calling? My name is Tonetta. I'm calling from Philadelphia, PA. Okay. Welcome. And it's Toretta? Tonetta. Tonetta. Okay. Welcome. What can I do for you today or tonight? Um, um, me and um, my girlfriend had a phone out. Her name is Christine. Um, she had given me a diamond ring, and this is a relationship, a new one, for about six months. And there was talks about her moving in and living here in my apartment and stuff like that. Do you see any kind of reconciliation or her moving in here, anything of that nature? Well, I just felt like the falling out was very heated and there was a lot of exchange back and forth and a lot of yelling back and forth. Um is there any way you could step it back a notch and just kind of apologize and take the high road on this? I haven't really spoken to her because she's behind in her rent. We live in two separate apartment buildings. She's behind in her rent, and she's already on edge, and she doesn't know what she's going to do. And I told her that she could move in here until she got herself together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she hasn't spoken to me in a couple of weeks, so. Okay. Um, I'm just feeling that um, she will be speaking to you, but you, you, it's something about taking the high road and just kind of let her speak, just let her vent out and just, like, a, like I just see a deflated balloon um, in her behalf, and you just take the high road and just, just kind of take it. And once, she, once the mm-hmm. balloon's deflated, and then she's going to listen to reason. Um, so... I would just step back in the situation right now, and right. She, she's she's the one who's going to be coming to you. Do you know a time frame of when she comes forward or when she wants to move in here? Uh, well, let's just let's, let's just say come forward. I don't know about moving in quite yet. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to say by before the end of the month. So we're we're what? It's the ninth. Yeah, about two right. weeks, I'm going to say. About two more weeks. That she's going to come forward? Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, because she said that she can't pay her rent, so I don't know what she's going to do over there in that apartment. Yeah, but I feel like she is going to come forward. She is going to want to talk to you. Um, she's going to be upset about something, too, and maybe it's just what she's going through. Um, but just right. kind of let her talk. let her talk her way through, let her talk her way out. And then things 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 will start to be better. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. All right. Thank you're you. so welcome. Uh, okay. Nice. Thank you. I mean, you know, when you do your readings, it's interesting. You do have a nice, soothing voice. I mean, is that something that you do on purpose to try to be soothing? No, that's me. <laughs> So uh, yes, my kids don't is. my my kids don't think so, but yeah, but <laughs> yeah, well, <I'm> <laughs> <me>. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> but that's no, when they were because little. Because I listen that's, to you. I I yeah. got to your YouTube channel. I was listening to a couple things today, and it's the same voice. <laughs> I know. Same mellow voice, which is very, it is, I agree, very soothing. Johnny, it is. Yeah, that's, I, Did you I, have anything? I, I, okay. it was born yeah. with this voice, and like I said, I have some audio books out there that I have narrated with my voice, too, and people just, just say that, and also meditation CDs um, with my voice, and people just say, they just kind of listen to my voice, and they go into a trance, it's just so smoothing. And everything. So maybe it's just part of the package of who I am and what I'm supposed to do. So mm-hmm. um, the voice voice has a lot to do with it, too. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Hmm? Okay. I was going to add something. Now I forgot. <laughs> when that uh-huh. happens, can you tell people what they forgot they were going to say? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay. Uh- You're worn out hanging around somebody like that who's asking you, do you have anybody or have you had a friend that is just when you hang out with that friend, they're asking you constantly to look into something for them or what am I thinking or anything, but it's just nonstop. Have you had that experience? No, I, 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 I really set rules and boundaries, and my true friends know not to take advantage of the situation with me. Um, yeah, you have to. Me. And a lot of times when they become true friends, it's hard to read them after a while. Um, life path readings, that is. Um, loved ones I can still read if they're true friends because their loved ones are always talking, talking, talking. But to give them life path direction, it gets a little bit too personal when I become a true friend with them. So they're going to have to go to somewhere else because I always want, I always wanted to focus on the positive with them and not focus on if I see something that's not going to happen or for them, I feel bad. So... So then I have to say, oh, I should have, I should, I should have date you, or I shouldn't have become your friend. You know, now you can't tell me my life or what's going to happen and stuff. And I hear that all the time. <laughs> That's good. That's a good thing. That's kind of a protector toward to you, so you don't have to deal with it. It's just not going to be able to read. You're not going to be able to read that kind of thing. Yeah. So, and when I, and, but what you know, about you? I, what about? Go ahead. If you what about want me? To go to somebody, like if you want to go to, I mean, if you don't feel like reading yourself constantly, maybe you want to have some help or healing or some advice by somebody else. Do you have a favorite medium? Well, it's hard because um, a lot of people down here don't know who I am, and I have to go when I travel. I have to find somebody who doesn't know me um, to read me, and um, so. Yeah, we. Um, I had a, a nice psychic or a, um, psychic reading the other night um, from a young girl. Um, her name is Aura, and she's in the St. Augustine area, and um, just <laughs> pulled these cards out and did a did a good reading. She was really spot on on everything. Um, mm-hmm. So I was I was I was impressed on how that all came to fruition, and I understood as she was pulling the cards. I was looking at the cards, and I was kind of I already knew what she was going to interpret before she even said it, and then she started interpreting things, and then I kind of added my two cents and to kind of validate everything. So, but yeah, Good. It's, it's you, you know, but I'm still, I'm, be too nervous. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's it. But I'm still looking for a medium to um, bring my father through. He hasn't come through yet, and he. 2019, he passed. So, mm. um, okay. don't try and find one. But it's all right. right. He'll come when the time comes. Are you ready for <laughs> yeah. a next caller? We'll take the next caller. Okay. This is area code 253. Are you there? Oh, yes, I am. Hi. Hello, and, your per- and your name is? Hello. Um, my name is Denise. Hi, Denise. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Seattle. Seattle. I've been to Seattle before. And it was raining, oh, raining, gorgeous. raining when I was there. Oh, no. <laughs> you came at the wrong <laughs> time. I, I think I went in the winter time because I remember it being cold. I was there with my dad. Um, we we were looking. He was in the dry cleaning business, and we were um, looking at a, a drapery cleaning. It was called, I don't know if Eldon Cleaners are still there, um, but this was many, many moons in the 80s. And... So we went there for business to get to buy a franchise, and we, I remember going on the Space Needle there and everything. And oh yeah, they've, they've redone it now. So it's really cool. 
Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it was, the yeah. 19, it was in the 80s since I've been there. I think the first rock, I think it was the first Rocky that came out. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, it's a <laughs> it long time a while ago. ago. But, uh, how, how long ago did, did did Barbara move away? Because Barbara, you said oh. you're from here. Yes, I moved away when I was 18 to be a flight attendant in Nashville. But I did grow up in Seattle. It's such a wonderful place. But I would go back for a bit in college, of course, to see my parents and I. Yeah. There, it is a fabulous city. Hmm. It is. I really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But, so, what can I do for I you guess, tonight, Denise? Well, my my question is, um, I just went through some legal stuff, and I'm hoping mm-hmm. that it's completed. Um, I still feel like there's still going to be some bombs dropping, so I'm I'm trying to. Um, I'd steer myself away from that and wondering if I'm going to, you know, start a new life in a in a wonderful new direction. Okay, when you say legal stuff, was it a, a divorce situation or? Um, kind of. It was, uh, so yes, it started out with a divorce and then left the mother-in-law and the mother-in-law uh, proceeded to sue me. Okay, so it's a, the mother-in-law came after you. Um, I, yeah. I, uh, your question is, is is this final? Is this going to be behind you or if anything's going to come up anymore? I feel like yes. they, it's like I, what I'm seeing is like wind out of their sails, that there's no more wind left um, to do this. And you have the power now if you um, sue in return that you can get something just, just for um, – you know, just just for being bullied and just for being sued for no reason, you know. Um, so I have a feeling that this is it. This, they're done. Okay. So. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. And You're as, welcome. As as for a, um, a new relationship or a new life? How old are you, you Denise? Something. Uh, I'm 56. 56. <sighs> Why don't you enjoy your singleness right now? Have fun. Okay. Turn back the clock. You know you've been through. You, I want to say you've been through hell and back because um, of the marriage, the relationship, and stuff like that. And if you could just, you know, have a little fun, pair for yourself, take dance lessons, do something for fun for a little bit. What's going to happen is when you're not looking, that's when things happen. And so if when you're looking and you start joining dating sites and stuff. I feel like you're going to get frustrated. But when you're doing something for yourself and you're having fun, somebody's going to pop up right underneath your nose and you're going to go, wow, where did this come from, person came from? And it's going to be like, okay. it's going to be a deep love. It's going to be like love at first sight. It's going to be very deep. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. I wish Thank you the best. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You know, I know that lady. Uh, she's she's a mutual friend of me and Barbara's. And I gave her a heads up about crawling tonight. Okay. Good. Yeah, that was. She's a real sweet lady. Good. Well, I wish her the best. Divorce is not easy. What? She asked who it was at. Oh, it's a friend of ours. It's a mutual friend of ours from a friend of a friend, um, is what I'm trying to say. You, You probably even. You may not know her. But you know her friend, so that's what I'm saying. That's who that is. I gave her a heads up to call in tonight. Okay, good. All right. So, divorce is not easy. So it's you got to start all over again. Your new life. You're wondering if I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. Is Mr. Right out there, Mrs. Right? And you know all these things go through your head. But the most important thing is to focus on yourself. Do what makes you happy, have fun in life, and that person's going to pop up because that person's doing the same thing as you're doing, and you're going to have a lot in common with that person, and that's the whole key. When you start looking on dating sites and trying to match and all that, you get all frustrated, and a lot of people are, I I hate to use the words false, but they they put this false pretense of who they are out there, and then when you get to meet them, get to know them, they're not the person that that you think they're going to be. So that's why if you just go out and just do your thing, you're going to find a person doing the same thing. I like that advice because that <laughs> also puts a lot of pressure on you. If you put this, everybody's going to make a profile out there that's going to be the best of them. And, mm-hmm. and then you have to live up to that. And that is so much pressure that you're going to be 
all of a sudden put on yourself right off the bat. That's right. Yep, I know. I love so. your advice for her because that's the advice. I wasn't really asking. We were just having a conversation about relationships. And you told me that, too. When you're not looking, that's what happens. And I know that. And I love that advice that you gave her about just take some time for yourself. Because that's what I'm doing. I'm a few years younger than her, but I'm not by much. And, you know, I decided at this time in life I am going to do that. I feel mm-hmm. empowered by it. And I like that you say that that is when, when I'm doing what I want to do, or in general, everybody, what you want to do, what you love, isn't the person going to fit into that a lot better than if you're looking and trying to fit people in? Yeah, yeah and, and that's how it is. It's like, you know, my line of work, I love metaphysical stuff. I like ghost hunting and crystal um, digging and stuff. And, you know, doing all that stuff, I'm going to run into a person who's doing the same thing, who likes ghost hunting, crystal shopping, and metaphysics and stuff. And, it's, you know, it'll be right there. So yeah. that's how it all works. You have your great conversations with that person. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. It'll be fulfilling. So, are you, so oh, let's ask Johnny. Are, are you listening, Johnny? Are you listening, yeah. Johnny? Yeah, I am listening. You gotta, you got to start doing things that you like and you have fun with, and that person's going to come along doing that same thing. And yeah. no expectations, don't expect anything, and and that does happen. I mean, it is true. It's like I, I, one of the things is like the upcoming trip, I keep thinking in my mind, what's going to happen to me the first time I see Barbara? I mean, this is going to be interesting. I've gone it over in my mind so many times. You know, you know it's, uh, this is the first time you're meeting face-to-face? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, but you've been talking, and uh, it's 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 going to be like you're talking. Close your eyes when you see her. There you go. Okay. It's going to be like you're talking to her. <laughs> you do it too, Barbara. I'm closing just, my yeah. eyes. Yeah, just close your eyes I mean, and talk to her, and, and that, that's friends. how it's going to be. It's different. I mean, we're, I know that. You're so I know worried that. about He's so worried. He's anticipating it so much that he could give himself a heart attack. He has a lot of fear in him. Could you, yeah. could you fix his fear because he's afraid of everything, Joseph? It's like, what if this happens? What if that? Okay, but no wonder this is your first trip here because you've been too afraid to come. So well, it's like, you know, I'm thinking here? all sorts. I've been thinking all sorts of things. I mean, is is um, is, is is Barbara going to kill me? Is her daughter going to lock me out of the house? I mean, just everything. <laughs> You, you, you and Barbara's been friends for a couple of years now, and you've been talking. Yeah. You know, she's going to show you a good time. She's going to show you Los Angeles. She's <laughs> going to show you things that you have never saw before. Just have fun, you guys are the best yeah. of friends. You know, I have friend, I have friends that are girls, and I hang out with them all the time. There's no expectation. I don't hit on them. They don't hit on me. We no, go not out. We have a good them, time. No, no. I'm just telling Johnny. This is how you and Barbara's going to be. You know, because I have I have girlfriends here that I just go out and I have good times with, no expectations or anything. You know, they're just my best buddies. You gonna go there, be best buddies, have a blast, have fun. I think what it is is that it's sort of funny. The other day I was walking around and I was thinking, well, how would you describe your relationship with with um, with uh, Barbara? And it's sort of funny because a lot of times it sort of turns into a gender reversal role of my fair lady um she's always giving me tips on how to sound better you know talk better that sort of thing okay the rain in spain can you say that (laughs) 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 okay yeah constructively Uh uh-huh yeah Constructive criticism, but I don't know what Johnny was saying. It cut out for. I don't know what he was saying about the caller. Did you think that was a caller we knew before from Seattle? Yeah. I don't. I don't think it was. Yeah. Uh, knew that do you think that was? I actually am friends with her. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into like specifics for her privacy, but but uh, she is somebody that that you know through a friend it, that we've had on. Uh, one of your very oh, okay. good. Friends. I think I know now. Yeah, and, and, and it's, okay. yeah, and it's just sort of, I mean, we are, uh, you know, I told her to uh, call in because I gave her kind of a heads up, and, um, okay. you know. And I also remember her problem, and so that is so good to know, Joseph, 
right. the advice you gave her because <laughs> it's almost over and everybody wants the lawsuits to be over, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so You're- I remember it very well, and it's been a long road for her. So thank God we know now it's almost over, or it is over. I can't remember. Yeah, well, that's One what she's two. saying. The divorce is final, and she said that um, at the divorce, it was a mother-in-law situation getting involved. And I, I feel like when I see the winds out of the sail, it just shows me that they're done. They, they did everything that they could to hurt her or try to hurt her, and it's, it's finished. Now they're going to move forward, and, you know, so. And Do you have any advice for us on how do we find our, our what do we call that, your well, the, the spirit guides. The spirit guides. What was spirit okay. guides? What? Oh, okay, okay. What is your question guides. about spirit? What, what's your question how about spirit guides? Our, how do we find oh, our? How do we find our own guides? guides. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 not really a hard thing to do. Sometimes we overthink it, and we are born. Uh, when we're born, we have a guide that's our control. It's with us to our death, to our birth, to our death. Our control. And it's that inner voice within ourselves. You got to pretend you're five years old and you have that imaginary friend that you talk to, and that's how you talk to your guides. Names is not important. They don't need names, but if you want to give them the name, just whatever name resonates to you, whatever you feel that guide's name is, go with it. Like I started off with the three amigos. Um, it was Patrick, Indigo, and Sparrowhawk. Those were my three guides and how how they came through and how they got their names. Um, Patrick. When I channel Patrick, he has an Irish accent, and when he speaks to me, his quotes, laughter raises the vibrations. That's his, his quotes. Oh, cool. um, but he's from, he's from Dublin, Ireland. He passed away in the 1800s, his last time here. Indigo, he comes to me as the color indigo. I don't see a face. I see the color indigo in my third eye, and I hear him. But he is Arcturian. He's extraterrestrial, and that's how he comes through. Sparrowhawk. He comes through as Native American. My body, I, you know, I'm a big guy to begin with, but when I channel Sparrowhawk, I'm like two times my size. My chest really pops out, and my arms and my voice drops three octaves down, like, welcome, for I am Sparrowhawk. And like I said, I thought he was oh, Native American. So <laughs> but he, he, is, he is the guardian of the galaxy, so to say, like the movie, but he is the guardian of the galaxy. He, he watches over Mother Earth, and he's planetarium. And he's like a planet type thing, planet energy. And that's who Sparrowhawk okay. is. Okay. Yeah. He just comes out as an indigenous Native American because they worship the earth and that's why he comes through as Native American to me. Right. Now it's coming to me because of you explaining this. Okay. I always did this voice and it was a spirit coming to me and it would make my daughter when she was young really laugh and I would do the sound of him and everything. And his name was Wildflower, and it was an American Indian. And I know how to do their accent really well because I grew up in Seattle, and I was always studying the Native Americans. And, oh, my gosh, that's who it is. Yes, what you did. In. You, you yeah. channeled Wildflower. Wildflower spoke through you. So, yes, um, you're a channel oh. then. How about that, Barbara? Like, see, you and I will get along. We can, we can channel together. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring Sparrowhawk, you bring Wildflower, we'll have a powwow. <laughs> Would you like funny. to do maybe one more call? Cool. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, Barbara. Take a call. Okay. One more call. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Hi. This is Donna. Hi. Hi. Who's calling? Hi. This is Donna. I'm in California, Santa Barbara. Hi, Donna. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. I have two little questions. Uh, I'm 67. I'd like to meet someone, and I'd like to um, generate more money somehow. You know, I get my disability, uh, well, Social Security. But um, I take care of a blind man four days a week for three hours a day. And the other day he said he was leaving me in his will. So, I mean, that's real nice of him. I hope that he follows through with it. Do you think he will? Because some I have people a yes just right say things. No, I have a yes right off the bat. Um, oh, he- okay. He he feels that um, he depends on you, Barbara, and he feels that um, you yeah. have done so much for him. He cares for your well-being after he's gone. He he wants to make sure okay. that um, you would have at least something to take care yeah. of yourself. And um, oh, 
Do you do you grow herbs or anything like that, by the way? Mm-mm. No. No? Okay. Um, you were just talking about your well-being and stuff like that. And for some reason, I said, I got somebody growing herbs and stuff. And I don't know if you know anybody or a plant farm or oh. something. Well, I just went to a naturopathic doctor. My brother-in-law sent me there, and so I'm on these vitamin regimes and, and stuff like go. that. There we go. Yeah, okay. So it was a Perfect. Doctor. That's what I'm. That's what I'm feeling with you then. Okay. So that has to do with your health then. Whatever you do with the, the natural medicine and the herbs and stuff like that, you're on the right mm-hmm. track then. And that's why I keep on seeing herbs around you and stuff. So this is okay. what you want to do right now. Okay. And do you see someone coming into my life? I just wanted to ask you that because you know I have my next door neighbor. You know I'm 67. He's 85. I help him out a lot too, but I'm not. Your person, as a partner. but you're, you're you seem to be a person that helps a lot of people, I and do. and you don't take time for yourself, and right. and you know we're only we're only getting older now. It's a time for you to do something for fun that that you would love to do. So um, what you need to do is that um, do something for yourself, have fun. Uh-huh. And that's where you'll yeah. meet people. If you're here with the 85-year-olds and the ones that are the senior citizens, oh. so to say, you're not going to meet anyone there, um, and no, you're always taking know. care of them, I and you're always taking you're taking you're taking care of them. So, I yeah. Oh. So I'm saving money now, so that's good. Um, I've been kind of lucky lately, so I'm able to put money away, and I just give it to my sister, and I tell her just hold on to it for me. So uh, next year I'm going to maybe plan a trip somewhere, maybe over in Europe or. Somewhere, I don't know. We'll you know, that's that's fun. You know, you might as well travel. And, you know, it's, hopefully everything will start opening up within six yeah, months, yeah. and or at least this time next year, where the the COVID would be more controlled. And yeah, and start tr- start traveling. Do things for yourself. It's very important. Now, now, now it's the time. Now it's the time to put yourself first. Okay. Yeah, Maybe. I'll have to do that more. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Hey, thank you, Joseph. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for calling, Donna. Okay, wow, that was a good round, and it went by so fast because it's always so interesting. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So you need to get your rest, Joseph. <laughs> yeah. We need that's, you that's... to stay healthy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, normally I'm off on Mondays, and I, you know, so that's, I, and I was wondering why, you know, I was just feeling so out of it. And I did a, I did do a reading about an hour ago for, I slept someone else. To do a reading too, but yeah, next Monday I'll be sharp as a tack. Well, and you were still sharp though, but that was so interesting. And I did go to your Instagram and looked at the post, and I saw the two ghost faces uh, in yeah. the window. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Ooh, a little spooky. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's totally cool. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh wow, yep. that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you so much for your expertise and. We look forward to having you back on Monday. On normally your day is off, so that will be our third Monday in a row. And we have our phones blowing up, so that's a good sign that we're helping people. And it is a good feeling, isn't it, to help people? Well, it is. Um, I feel like it's my calling. And, you know, when it's your calling, this is what I do. And God provides and keeps me doing this work, keeps me young, keeps me healthy, keeps me busy. And that's all I ask. So. And you are a big guy. It looks like you hit the gym a lot. I well, I'm six one. Um, I, I should hit the gym more, so to say. I don't hit it enough. You look good. Um, you look good <laughs> in that last post. You okay. Yeah, yeah, you really do. It was it was and the angle of the picture. You. It was the it was the angle of the picture. My photographer did a good anyway. job. Yeah, no. you got some good assistance. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you. And you know what you did today? Another thing for me, every single time, it just seems so like a little simple question. But then it turns out to be so big for me because it sparked my remembering, my wildflower. That is my spirit guide. Hello. And I have another one, and it's called Barbara Moore, too, which is the person up above me a little bit, which is basically me telling me what I need to do. So it's like my own right. self. So right. should that I name is, that, that is, person? That is your higher self which, that you're talking okay. about. So you're, what you're doing is you're channeling your higher self. Your higher self knows all, and that's where you're getting direction on what you need to do. 
Yep. Pretty cool, isn't it? But that's not it's, called a spirit guide, then. That's just well, your higher self. Your higher self is a part. Of, it is a, it is a guide to you because it, it's attached to you. Uh, it has it's all knowing. It's all God. So you're tapping into your higher self. It's like a supercomputer. Um, so you're tapping into your supercomputer and getting all this information and stuff. So it's a good thing. Okay. Well, I'm going to see if there's any more out there. Just open your mind up, people, and start thinking outside the box. Justice mm-hmm. Labruto can help you with that more than anybody I know. So go <laughs> to ourjourneyoflife.com, Joseph's website, and you'll be able to find out so much more. Also, mm-hmm. subscribe to his YouTube channel, and yep. you'll see this on our YouTube channel, but you see a lot. I was listening to your YouTube interviews uh, today, a couple of them, which were really interesting. A lot of good mm-hmm. teaching. It's all very positive, too. Thank so you. we are grateful to have you here. And everybody go to your Instagram and your Facebook, Joseph Labruto, the third. All right. Because when I listen to other things, they're always saying Joseph Labruto, the third. Yeah, I know. Do you prefer like that? Well, well it, it's, it's my birth name, the third. Everybody think I'm a rich guy when you say the third, like Thurston Howell the third on Gilligan's Island. But yeah, you know. Hi, but, yeah. yeah, it's, it's you know my grandfather, my father, and myself. So I am the third. It's okay. Joseph, oh. Joseph the third, Joey, Joe. Hey you, anything. <laughs> hey you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get with you maybe hopefully because I'm going to be traveling to. Chicago soon, but hopefully before that, maybe we can do a little healing session on the side. We can do that. We, I can do. We can do awesome. a telephone healing with you, and work something out, or get me to California, Barb. You know. Yeah. I'd okay. Love to. Okay. You know, that's a happening place where you are. You're by Huntington Beach, right? Huntington Beach there. Huntington Beach, yes, and I will see what that entails. Oh yeah. I'm going to do my been... first um, fire. Maybe I can see something with fire because I can do a huge bonfire down there. You know how they have it open for the public. You just bring your wood and you have your bonfire at the beach. Yeah, I would love to do it. I can do my healing. I can do my messages from heaven. And it would be fun. Yeah. That would be really fun. Okay, mm-hmm. well, I'm going to find out what that would entail to get you out here. So we can work on sounds, that. Awesome. Sounds, won- sounds wonderful. You- okay. Thank you. All I right. mean to cut you off. I'm more yeah, okay. excited today. <laughs> what about Johnny? Do you have any last words before we well, go? You know, I, I just want to say uh, about, I mean, I hope I, I didn't mean to cut you off really with the last call there, but, but I mean, it was just, it's just that um, this person wanted to go through, but I like, I like, um, it, it, it's interesting. I'm, I have, I, I, whatever I talk, you know, it's it's fun talking to people, getting people on the show. I mean, I, I talked to a UFOologist today who's going to be on soon, and, and, and a lot of that stuff is interesting. You don't really do UFOlogy, do you, Joseph? Oh, I have an interest in it um, very much. I can, I can listen to that topic all day on it. Okay. But, um, you know, one of my guides are extraterrestrials. And, I, and my book, Is There More to Life Than What We Know, I have a whole chapter on extraterrestrials written on uh, my interpretation and things. But, wow. yeah, but I, I, it's nothing that I really teach or anything, but it's something I'm very into, and I can, I can listen to lectures and stuff like that, too. So okay. I, if you have somebody on there, I'd be fascinated to listen to see what they have to okay. say. Okay, well, thank cool. you for coming on. And, uh, okay. Uh, have you done the shout-out yet, Barbara? Yes, I did. Thank you so much. But I just wanted to remind everybody to go to my Facebook, and I want you to look at my Amazon wish list, please, because I have all of Joseph's books there. I would like a birthday present. (laughs) And get yourself one, too. We didn't touch upon that, but last show we we, uh, listed all of your books, and they're amazing and great, and we can learn so much from them. So I'm excited. Please, somebody get me one. I did order one, okay, on its way. Wonderful. But, and also, and it looks get, like you do them in Spanish, too, or one of them in Spanish. Yeah, I have. there's two of them in Spanish. I have to convert the speaking to have one in Spanish still. But, yeah, there's, there's okay. the, is there more to life than what we know? And the promise, the metaphysical teachings of Jesus, they're both converted in Spanish already. Uh-huh. Good to know. 
That's very good okay. for everybody to enjoy. All right. Well, thank you, Joseph, and thank you, Johnny, thank you. and, and thank thanks, you. callers, and have a great night, everybody. All right. See you next Monday. Good night.